It's not a cooker. Okay. This one, uh, click cooker. <coughs> it's not a cooker, right? It's a pointer only, right? You want the control? I didn't bring. Oh. I forgot. The mala is a killer. Okay, thank you for staying. Next, we have Sao Chong. Present to us the framework and you uh, add all walls oh. with the oh, back. Okay, okay. Yeah. alright, alright. Um, <laughs> well, I'll be setting up. Embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Okay, I hand over to Sao Chong. Thank you. Hi. All right, so uh, I'm the second speaker up tonight, and I'm going to talk about uh, how you can create web applications in multiple programming languages. Hopefully, that will dampen some of the uh, flaming just now that uh, happened. But, uh, let's see how that goes. So, uh, the uh, I'm going to talk about my my framework, uh, web framework. is called It's called Tanuki, and uh, that's the Tanuki mascot, the one on the uh, the left. Uh, if you want a sticker of that, please stay back and ask me for one later. Um, I have them. Okay. And I have stickers for all of these too. Oh. Right? You can also ask me for them. Okay? Uh, <laughs> okay. No, no tattoos. Uh, I don't have buttons, I don't have t-shirts, I, I don't have anything else other than stickers. So uh, that's, that's... And that's my last batch. So after this talk, I'm going to retire uh, probably I'm going to retire this particular talk, um, but and the stickers as well. So come and ask me if you want some of these stickers. Unless somebody asks me for more, then I'll probably print them again. Okay, um, let me try to figure out how to use this first. Um, no, no. Mike to the rescue again. Oh. Okay, okay. Wow. Thank you, Mike. It's always a lifesaver. So, uh, my name is Sao Xiong. I uh, work uh, with Singapore Power now. I run this team within Singapore Power called uh, SP Digital. So I, I've been in the industry for about 25 years now. So uh, I started off my career programming in Java, yeah, by the way, uh, and it just popped up right at the right time, right? So uh, I did Java before it became a release, okay? That sort of dates me. Uh, anyone remember Tumbling Duke here? Well, other than Sugin, Tumbling Duke? No? Nobody? Okay. Um, by the way, I, I just spoke, I just gave this exact talk in uh, GopherCon Vietnam, and I was speaking to a crowd like this very much, about the same size, and every question I asked, nobody said a single thing. Nobody said a single thing, okay? And that wasn't just me, okay? It wasn't just me. It was every single speaker was like that. I hope that's not the case tonight, okay? Right, so um, anyway, I, I work in these companies before. Um, I speak in, in uh, different conferences. I just told you I spoke in uh, GopherCon Vietnam. Um, I also spoke in GopherCon India before and uh, GopherCon Dubai. Um, yes, there was a GopherCon Dubai, uh, not anymore. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a story another time. But anyway, uh, I speak in conferences. I also run the, uh, uh, with some of the team members here, uh, the GopherCon Singapore, right? So we're gonna make an announcement later. Uh, about GopherCon Singapore, so, so stay on for this. Uh, I wrote four programming books. In case you don't know, one of them is about Go. Um, the uh, Go web programming is a book I wrote. Okay, so that's pretty much about myself. Um, so how many of you here are software developers? Wow, thank you for your participation. <laughs> But it's, it's such a great relief that people actually respond, right? Because <laughs> none of you guys raise a hand and say, oh shit, I'm going to walk out of here. <laughs> uh, so you know, software always changes, right? Always, always changes. And that's, that's why we, we still have a job, okay? 
Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And requirements always change, right? And that's, that's what gives us you know, all the complaints that, hey, you, know, you always change your requirement, you always change what you want to do. You know, and uh, this is a source of many, many battles, I'm quite sure. Um, libraries change as well, I'm quite sure. All of you have experienced this. And uh, programming languages change too, okay? Programming languages change into different programming languages even, right, sometimes. Uh, I, I remember I was uh, doing a lot of Ruby as well at one point in time, and one of the, uh, uh, and, and Rails as well. One of the big contributors for uh, Rails, he decided to up and create a, his programming language called Elixir, right? So I'm um, not sure some of you heard about it, right? So this is very interesting. So programming languages change too. Um, and of course, people change, right? So today you're handling this project, you're writing code for this particular project. Tomorrow, uh, you could be out of the, the company, somebody else picks up from you. Or it could be the other way around. You could be the one who's picking up somebody else. And uh, that's the time where you say, look, this code, none of it works, I'm gonna chuck it out of the window, I'm gonna rewrite the whole thing. Right, sounds familiar. Happens quite often. Um, Obviously, the, the guy who is paying for you and paying for the code will say, no, 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 no. Please wait a minute. You know, how much of this is actually usable? And then, of course, you go into this debate of how much is usable, how much is not, and then et cetera, et cetera. Right? So that's the story. Uh, so what happens? Right. Um, one of the big things that happen is really all, all these clashes. Okay? All this uh, dependency hell happens. Where if you write software that depends on other pieces of software, and uh, if you make any of these changes and they are dependent on each other, uh, this happens, right? This happens so often, sometimes we, we forget uh, how much of a problem this is. Um, this is actually an actual blog post from the uh, GitHub, GitHub uh, engineering blog, okay? They upgraded from Rails 3.2 to 5.2 at one point in time. Guess how long it took? Yes. Good guess. Any, any? Four years. Okay, that's <laughs> <laughs> not such a great guess. But any others? Five years. Five, oh, okay. <laughs> Five months. Yeah. Okay. I deliberately hit it because they actually celebrated this, right? They took one and a half years wow. to upgrade a framework. Remember this. This is a framework. Okay. This is not. Uh, they are not adding features to this. They're not building new software. They're adding a framework and they're celebrating. Okay? Don't forget they're celebrating. That's why they wrote this blog. They're very proud of it that it's one and a half years. Okay. Uh, and some get so much into it, it becomes like, you know, like Stockholm Syndrome. It's like, it's inevitable. And you know what? It's, it's okay. We, we get used to it. It's, it's fine. Right. So, this is, a con this is a situation in the software industry, and I'm not saying that I'm coming here now, I'm going to give you the, the solution. Uh, I've been working on this particular uh, uh, issue that has been sort of troubling me in my years of software development, and uh, I've been iterating on this issue. This is really my latest attempt to try to solve this problem, okay? And I present you my uh, framework, and if you think that uh, works, please help uh, contribute to it, and if you have some feedback, please give me feedback. Okay, but before I, I start, start on this, let me just uh, say that the problem is, again, not a new problem, and it has been solved before, okay? The, uh, the most frequent way of solving it is really just to remove the dependency between blocks of execution. And there has been other examples of how this has been done before. Anyone know? Anyone want to give an, an answer where this has been solved before? Is some, some place that you have seen before, it's actually very familiar to all of you. CGI. CGI? Good guess, but that's not what I meant. Yeah. You're a bit early, by the way. Um, any other guesses? Or you, you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I guess probably the later, since you actually raised your hands just now. Uh, so microservices and Docker, right? Basically, you're removing dependency from blocks of execution. Like, so if you if you write a piece of software and it's self-contained, it's so self-contained that it's not dependent on anything else, then you, you don't really have the dependency hell because you know, you're not, not dependent on anything else. 
Right? Uh, of course, uh, what this means is they're actually building everything that you need and they're going to dump it into one, uh, one container. You could put it, everything in one microservice. Often that works sometimes, but they are often where it doesn't really work either. In one case, it doesn't really work is actually within a single web application. Because within a single web application, you, you can't really split the concerns so much, right? Or split the uh, dependencies. Um, so what about web applications? Right. So let's, let me just roll back a little bit uh, to talk about what software applications are. Um, so essentially, software application is a piece of software, it's code, that can be used by human beings, right? As a user, you, you interact with it. Uh, you send in a request, you get a response. That's generally what a, a, so, a software application is. A web application is basically you know, a software application on, on the web. And uh, request and response uh, is basically what you know is HTTP. So let, let's look at what the request is. Um, it's basically an action on an object with certain modifiers on it. And if you translate that into uh, a web application, a web request, then this is basically a method on a URL with body and headers as the uh, modifiers. And this, these are optional modifiers. Okay? So I know this is somewhat basic for many of you, or I think almost every one of you. Just bear with me for a while. Uh, I'll get to why I'm talking about this. And you get, you see how this is relevant to Tanaki as well. For um, the response, it's um, pretty straightforward. It's um, a response back to the user with a status, header, and, and body. Okay? Status being the uh, 404, the 200s, 300s, and so on and so forth. How about a web application? So web applications generally work this way. You have a router or multiplexer or uh, whatever you call it. This thing basically is the one that takes in the request and you will route accordingly to different handlers. Right? In different applications, I call different things. Some would call it actions, some call it handlers, some call it many different uh, things. But essentially, I, it's, it's a handler. Right? Uh, Go calls it handler is a very convenient term, so I call it a handler as well. So this is one particular um, way of doing web applications, and this is the way that CGI, uh, Fast CGI, Apache, Nginx mods does it. Um, the router becomes your web server. Right? So your web server is a router. And then it routes to different handlers. These handlers could be applications that are sitting on the same server. Um, and then they, they are started up or they uh, have already been started. And they sent this uh, request. They will process it and return it. Okay. Uh, but the more common ones today is, is this particular model, which is the application server model. Right? So for those of you who code in Java, uh, this is really fa very familiar ground to you. Right? This is your whatever uh, Java application server that uh, you're running on. All the handlers are on it. Your servlets are uh, all the handlers. Um, your EJBs, if still EJBs are still being used, I'm not quite sure. Uh, they, are, they are your handlers as well. So there's an application server. Uh, Java uses it. .NET uses it. Um, Ruby uses it as well. Right? So any Ruby is here uh, in, in the audience? Huh? Only two? Oh, OK. So Ruby uses a lot of application servers, Python as well, right? Um, PHP and so on and so forth. So this is actually a very common model. But this model basically, um, you, I mean, from the very term application server, Java application server, it means that all your handlers are in Java, right? All your handlers are in Ruby. All your handlers are in, in Python and, and so on and so forth. So this is a single programming language as well. What if you break it up into different languages, right? So each handler is written, could be uh, written in a different language using different libraries and, and so on. Uh, and that's really the, I would say, that's the whole idea of what Tanuki is. Right? It's not a very complex idea. The concept is really each handler now runs in its own environment. It is not dependent on anything else. And uh, uh, basically, it could be written in different program languages if necessary. So obviously, you could write everything in the same program language too. There's actually nothing stopping you from doing that. But uh, theoretically, you can actually write in different programming languages. Like some cuteness here. OK, uh, let me talk about the uh, Tanuki handlers. OK, there are three types of handlers uh, that I've created today. So the first type is what I call a uh, binary or an executable script. I call them bins. Uh, basically, these are just executable programs. Right? 
The second is a local listener, and the third is a, a remote listener. I'll explain a little bit uh, about these. So binaries are basically executable binaries. Nothing more than that. They are going to be started up by a tanoki uh, when a request comes in. Uh, the request that has been sent in will be JSON, and the response will also be JSON, right? And the uh, uh, Tanuki will translate the JSON and send back an actual HTTP response. How do you do this? You have a calling argument to the binary. This is uh, sending in the JSON, and then the uh, standard out will spit out the uh, JSON back to the Tanuki uh, uh, server. So that is how it works. Very simple. Uh, it's very much like CGI, right? The model is very much like CGI. Uh, in fact, the, uh, I would say the, the, the main difference is really that CGI uses an environment variables, right? Here, I pass through entirely through JSON. There are no environment variables uh, involved. So it's really, really independent. A listener is a TCP socket server. You are started by uh, Tanuki. Uh, the calling argument will give it a port number, and then uh, it will start up. Right? And then once it starts up, you will send the, the request through the socket to the port and respond to the port as well. And all the uh, requests and response, they are all in JSON. Okay. Pretty simple. This is how the JSON looks like. Okay. Don't be uh, too startled. It's really whatever is inside the request is, is all there. And this is a response JSON. You can see this is much simpler because obviously you don't need to construct this yourself. This is something that you need to pass, right? So if you are, whichever language you write in, you can write in Ruby, Python, Go, uh, PHP, uh, whatever it is. As long as you can pass JSON, you can pass this, you can take the information and then you can process it. What you just need to do is send this response back, okay? So if you can create a JSON, in fact, JSON is nothing much more than a string, right? So if you can create a string and send it back, it will work too. What you need is a hate, uh, status. You need to tell what the status is, 200 in this case. Um, if you want to add haters, you can just add haters. And uh, if you want to add a body, you can add a body as well. Okay? So that's a uh, response. Um, let me show you how this works for uh, Ruby. Okay? Uh, so this is the simplest form of a binary is an executable file where you require a JSON library. You pass the argument. Remember the argument is a JSON file, uh, which is a request. I just take the params, which is the name, and uh, I do a put string. Okay, Change it to res uh, JSON. How it goes, you return. Go a little bit more complicated because a lot more processing and also added up a, a cookie hit here as well uh, into the header. Uh, and this is how you keep persistence, right? Because if you need to persist between sessions, you need cookies. In fact, every programming language does this way. This is the web way of doing it. You know, uh, I just make it a lot more explicit. Instead of a framework actually doing it for you, now you have uh, to do it yourself. Right? But it's not that much more complicated. Uh, listener. A Python uh, listener, you start up a socket, you listen, whatever you, you, you receive, uh, basically you send out again here uh, with uh, some processing. And let me do a, a live demo here. Okay. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, how does the, oh, can you cannot see anything? All right. Mirror. Yeah. Let, all right, here you go. So let me start the Tanoki server. Right, that, that's, that's all you need to do. Um, start the Tanuki server. Tanuki is written in Go. And Tanuki is written in Go. Uh,
right? You see this form here? Let me show you how the code is like. If I find my cursor and show it to you, you know, uh, where is my code? Okay. Right, so this is actually the, uh, the YAML file that defines how you route. Right, well, let me show you the, uh, where is it? The handlers. Okay, so you notice here within, okay, I'm, I'm going to stick this out. So you notice here, uh, the, the code here has a case, and I will test the method. If I'm sending a get request, what I'll do is I'll return whatever is after. You know, Ruby has this strange thing called uh, n, okay? Uh, basically, everything after this n is considered data. So I use this neat little Ruby trick, and I return everything that's after here. And this is basically the form you saw just now, okay? But if I send a post, what it will do is just say hello, whatever I put in under the name. And the name is basically uh, the username, okay? Let's see how this works. So basically, it returns the uh, the information, right? So that's that's uh, in Ruby. I actually did it in a number of other languages. This is in uh, in, in okay. This is the, uh, the actual executable. Uh, did it in, in PHP. Like this is how it looks in PHP. Uh, this is a Python uh, listener that I showed you just now. This is a very simple Ruby uh, listener. Uh, this is the uh, Sorry, this is a simple Ruby bin. This is a simple Ruby listener. And um, I did a little bit more stuff as well. Uh, let's see. I did something in Bash. Okay, so I wrote a, a handler in Bash. Uh, pretty simple. Basically, I used this file called uh, JQ. It's a, a JSON query, right? Basically, uh, I just extract the information. And literally, I just cat out this thing and send it back. Right? Let me show you, just to show you that I'm not kidding you. Okay. Oh, I hope this works. Right, so this works. But how well does it work? Right, so I actually uh, put in some timing here as well. Actually, the, the bash one works pretty well. Yeah. Um, 25 milliseconds. Yeah, 25 milliseconds. I did one in uh, Rust as well. Yeah, I know this is a Go programming uh, meetup, but yeah, I did one in Rust as well. Rust so, is a nice language. So. Go is better. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell the difference, right? So you say from uh, Ruby. Uh, down to Rust. I have it in Go as well. Yeah, so it's, it's actually quite, quite fast. About 9, 10 seconds as well. Yeah. And um, so this is the, uh, this is the binary. Let me show you the listener, if I have it running. Uh, let's see. Ruby. So Ruby listener is, is uh, actually pretty fast. It's in, in microseconds. Like, um, let's look at the Go one as well. Like, so um, it's about the same. That's because the processing is uh, very minimal, right? Actually, there's literally no processing. I just return the, the data. If there's more processing, I'm quite sure the performance will, will change. So anyway, so this is... Uh, this is Tanuki. It's uh, not a very complex 
framework, and uh, some might even dispute it to be called a web framework. But my rationale for calling it a web framework is it's basically a tool to help you to, to build uh, web applications. And uh, uh, the, the thing about this is it doesn't help you to build web applications easily, right? Because it is not the, about the ease of uh, writing web applications. You'll notice it's not so, it could be, depending on your, your code, it could not, might not be so trivial to write uh, uh, full-fledged web applications with this. The, the thing is that now you can actually write web applications that are kind of independent from each other. If you change one handler uh, or somebody comes in tomorrow, the, the application actually works, but now you need to add in a new, new handler to do, uh, add in a new feature. You could keep the existing uh, code base as it is. You write in your favorite programming language, use your favorite libraries, create another handler, right? And you replace that part and everything will still work. But over time, maybe you might want to switch them out, right? Because remember, all of these just depends on uh, how it performs. You could switch them out one by one. Say, look, I, I don't like Ruby. It's not as performant. I want to switch it over to Go. So you switch over one by one, right? If the case where you need to switch uh, in a different framework, very often you need to, I can't switch it one by one, right? Basically, obviously, I need to switch all of it because it's just one web application. But in this case, it's, uh, web application where the uh, different handlers are not dependent on each other. And uh, that, that's basically the reason why I wrote Tanuki. That's all I have tonight. Any questions? Yes, please. So how different from the serverless programming? Ah, okay. So serverless programming is not a web application. Right, so this is a, a complete web application. Another question. Uh, so if I see like many languages you are running. So is it like executable? You just run Ruby uh, compiler every time request comes. So like if I hit hello world in the yes. Ruby, so every time I execute a Ruby compiler to run that uh, program, uh, like take the script and execute and then get the uh, data. So what you just need is uh, for, so there are three different types of uh, listeners, right? Uh, so three different types of handlers, right? So the first is a, a, is a binary. Binary is always local because it is called by Tanuki. So Tanuki actually calls uh, the file. It's not actually running. It is just, just there. When you, as a user, request for something to be done, Tanuki will route it to the correct binary. It will call it, run it in the process, send the data, the request, as an argument, a like calling argument, so your, your handler needs to process it. You need to take in this as a uh, calling argument, right? You saw the Ruby code just now is, is arc v0. So basically, it's the first uh, argument. You process it if you need to, or you just don't care, you just don't care. Uh, and then you need to return a response in JSON that has three values, the status, uh, the header, and the body. And that's all. Okay, so that's the binary. That's the simplest way, simplest, simplest possible. The more complicated ones where you need to start off a, a TCP socket server. Now, you can start it off uh, locally, which means you create this and uh, you expect Tanuki to call this on startup. So you will start this up uh, at a particular port of your choice, of the Tanuki's choice, of not your choice, right? You don't have a choice. Uh, and then the, uh, the uh, request will come in, it will send to this particular port and you will return to the same port. You could actually even run a remote listener, meaning that you create the same listener, you put it in another server, okay? You put it in another server. And this other server, you have to define the port now because Tanuki obviously will not be able to call this and start it up. So it runs as a separate server, you call this at the port, it will return to you. So uh, obviously it needs to be a reachable host. If it's not a reachable host, then, then you can't call it. Secondly, uh, you will expect there will be some network delay, right? some latency uh, issues and so on. Uh, but the good thing about it is if you have heavy duty processing in another s server, you could actually spin off a really large instance and put it in the Docker with a lot more memory or whatever it is and go crazy, right? Uh, and the whole thing could just return you one thing. And that's what I was uh, trying to refer to earlier on as well. Uh, you, can, you can actually convert this using Docker. You can also convert this using uh, microservices or whichever that uh, you know, floats your boat on the... But ultimately, the idea is that as a single web application, 
you do not need to be restricted as a single web uh, application under a single programming language running in a single environment. Yeah. Uh, so for example, Ruby, right? you could write Ruby uh, in 2.3, and then you could have another, same hand, uh, another handler in 2.4. Ruby comes again 2.6, okay, now you can write in 2.6. All of them using different libraries. You can, you can bundle your gems together and so on and so forth, right? So they can run under completely different environments. So, answer the question. Okay. So, last question. So, sure. uh, when you say you have multiple listeners, so is it like a, a proxy server? It's become like proxy server whenever I request, so it's listen to the port and just return the uh, data, whatever it's it, it actually, so Tanuki actually does certain things. And uh, right now, it's rather primitive. It, it, its main function is like a proxy. Uh, but in the future, the uh, the idea is actually to uh, provide more capabilities within Tanuki itself, so you can uh, do some pre-processing as well. But generally speaking, yeah, it uh, it does proxy your your handlers. That was any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Shaltong.